my loves, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing video and this is so special to me because this is one of those decks that I've stumbled upon. You guys know I'm very picky slash particular as a Virgo when it comes to inviting new things into my space and especially when it comes to tarot and anything involving the spirituality because this is what I do, this is my existence, this is what I love, this is the essence of my being. And I truly believe that you should spend more time focusing your energy on something that you love and that you're invested in and that you're committed in versus scattering that energy all over the place. And that includes tarot decks. Now, I originally, when I stumbled across this tarot deck, it wasn't something that it was that I was actively seeking. Although it's interesting how the universe kind of puts things in your, in your path that comes with perfect divine timing, whether you even realize that you're ready for it or that you're open to it. One of the reasons why I came down to New Orleans was to connect more with, you know, different belief systems, my own person, personal spirituality, my connection, the spirit connection that I have with the South, with New Orleans in particular, and also African American studies and religion. So <clears throat> I felt like in Philadelphia, although that environment was there, I couldn't get all pieces of it. And I wanted to completely consume, digest, and, you know, absorb all of what it was that I've been seeking for so long. And I set the intention for it. And now here we are. Now, um, what happened was I was walking through the French Quarter. No offense to the French Quarter, but I haven't found a spiritual shop really so far that I totally would, you know, recommend. But this one spot that I went to at, at, this, at this time was called Hex. And I'll link the address down below in the description box if you guys need it. But I went in to get a candle really quickly for a ritual that I was going to do later on. And I came across this deck. And it was the African American Tarot. It stood out to me. I love tarot decks in general, but I'm pretty slow when it comes to actually, you know, making a purchase and investing in it. At this moment in time, I have about 35, 40 tarot decks or oracle decks, but the ones that I gravitate to towards the most and the ones that I use the most often is two mini rider weight decks that are sandwiched together and one larger rider weight deck that I use for my group polls that I do every morning on my Instagram. So you'll either see that posted on my IG story, on my Twitter, or actually on my, I'll actually make an Instagram post. So if you aren't following me, go ahead and check me out there. I do polls all the time, especially in the very beginning of my journey. I was pulling all pulling cards all the time, every day, no matter what the circumstance was. But this was one of those decks that I came across, and <clears throat> it really stood out to me. There were a few that I was looking at that I've had my eye on. For example, the Unicorn Tarot, I think is what it's called, but I haven't bought it yet. I haven't purchased it. I could have all the money in the world, and I still take my time because with actually investing and putting money in it, I don't care if it's a dollar or $15 or $16 or whatever, or $600, when the timing is right is when I'll make that purchase. And this was one of those decks that I just needed to have it. So I picked it up and it has served me. It has served me so much life already. So you guys are probably like, Jess, this is supposed to be an unboxing video. You opened it. Of course I opened it. How could I not? I opened it as soon as I got home. That was one of the first things I did. I threw everything down and I opened the deck. I was so excited to get home and open the deck. I didn't even pull out the items that I originally went out for, I pulled this out because timing is everything and I was just so excited for this one. So that being said, the deck is the African American Tarot and it's by Jamal R. Thomas Davis. I don't know if he's the artist and the person who is interpreting the messages behind it, meaning like using his symbolism and then using his artistry in order to create this tarot deck, but whoever this person was, they killed it with this deck. I absolutely love it. There's a few things that stand out to me, number one, like throughout, you know, there's a few things that stand out to me when it comes to this tarot deck, and that is the vibrancy and the quality of the cards and the colors of this deck. Now, I'm going to use this small handful. There's 78 cards uh, total within this tarot deck because that's what it is. It's a traditional tarot deck, although the interpretations, the interpretations of each card might deviate, and we'll talk about that next. But the reason why it doesn't seem like there's that much, it's because I pulled out some special cards over here on my right next to my laptop while the next video is uploading, which is how to break in a tarot deck. So if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure that you are subscribed. 
and turn on notifications that way you get notified when I post these videos up. But I did pull out some cards specifically that I wanted to share with you guys. If I had my way, I would go through every single one of these cards as far as my interpretation and how it makes me feel and I would ask you guys, but we don't have that time right now, unfortunately. I would love to do a meet and greet at some point in the future where maybe we can have conversations like this, but so many of you guys are international or scattered throughout the U.S. and it just doesn't seem possible. Maybe we can do a live chat on my Instagram or maybe a live chat on my YouTube. Let me know if that's something that, it is that you're interested in. Maybe we can go through these cards and talk about them more specifically, more one-on-one. -on -one. But for the purpose of this video, for the sake of the sake of this video, I did pull out a significant amount of cards on this side that I want to show you guys and go through one by one, if we can. I mean, I'm going to watch the time. But this is what the cards look like, the other cards that I left. These are the cards that I just was like, you know, I like them, but, you know, I had specific things that I wanted to talk about with these other ones. And the first card that I have here is pretty interesting, I guess. It's the Two of Cups. And it represents partnership. But the reason why I have this card, well, it just happens to be sitting on the top. But this is, I have this because I wanted to show you guys what the colors of the cards look like and the quality of the deck itself. Now, there are some tarot decks, I'm not going to lie, that seem to be very flimsy. And there's some that are just like really stiff and really thick. And I feel like you have to find the perfect medium, especially if you're working with the tarot as much as I do. Because if they're too flimsy, they're going to rip sooner rather than later. They're going, to, they're going to get ravaged. If they're too thick, it's so hard to break it in and to make it feel comfortable when you're shuffling. Although months later, it tends to be a little easier. Um, the size of the deck, well, the, the, this tarot deck specifically, the colors, the quality is divine. Like if I was going to, wink, wink create my own tarot deck, or if I happen to be creating, wink, wink, my own tarot deck, this is the type of cards that I would use for my own personal preference, and I'm very, very picky. So, Jamal, you killed it with this, um, you know, picking this design and picking this, this size. That's the other thing, too. The size of these cards is everything. I am 5 feet, 100 pounds. My hands are not the largest, and I'm working with these cards all the time. So shuffling with these cards is so easy. They're, they fit right perfectly in the palm of your hand. They're easy to shuffle. They're not too small so that you can do that whole, like, if you ever shuffle your cards like this, which sometimes I do do for my newer decks, but for my older decks, I don't do that because they're so flimsy, you know, after working with them for so often that it's impossible for me to do that without them just, they just don't do it the same way. But if you do shuffle your cards like that, and that's how you like to shuffle them, then you'll find that you have a really easy time with shuffling them in that way. Or if you shuffle them like I do, which is like this, and wait for jumpers to come out, the Ace of Swords, I've been seeing this card a lot lately. Wait, I love him, by the way. I love him. If you're part of my Sacred Circle Tarot School, you can, you know, we're going through the story of each card and why the position of them is so important, and then we dive into the meaning of it. So if you're interested in that Sacred Circle Tarot School, you can see the links for that down below because the classes are for that. If they're not open right now already, then they're going to be open, depending on what time you're watching this video. But um, the Ace of Swords in general, like, I love with this deck, I really started, you know, watching the journey of each card, which falls in perfect alignment, is, but it kind of varies because this artist, his, his interpretation is different with certain cards with than it is with the Rider weight. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a mouthful. I don't really want to edit this video. I just want to like kind of talk to you guys. It's just us hanging out in my office space right now um, versus me editing and making this more than what it is. I just want to be solid, honest, authentic, real, rap, raw. So yeah, this, you know, the size of these cards, these cards are very easy to shuffle with and that's something that I appreciate. The symbolism of these cards, well, let's look at the color and the, the imagery and the artistry of it. It's just so vibrant and it's so symbolic and meaningful and the movement and the passion and the messages that are within it. Like the Rider Wake in general has a lot of symbolism that's in each card and I teach that within the Sacred Circle Tarot School. So it's really interesting to get another artist's interpretation of 
you know, what they feel that they get and or they under, their understanding of that card and what it symbolizes for them. And that's why I tell my students all the time within the sacred circle that it's very important that you journal and capture your feelings and what triggers, what memories are triggered and what in, your intuitively is being triggered and sparked by looking at the cards because that is going to take and deepen your readings and your own tarot practice. And this person obviously has done that and has used their study of African American and even the influence of African um, culture and history is so deep in God and goddesses is so deeply intertwined in this creation of this deck and that's what I really love. The other thing that really stands out to me is the connection, just as I'm saying this, the connection of ancestry. And that's something that I've been working with a lot lately in my own life. And by lately, I mean for the last three years, but specifically the last two years, highly concentrated the last two years. I can't believe it's been that long, time flies. But my connection to my ancestors and developing a relationship with them. Was Sorry guys, you already know that when I film, I short circuit the electricity and blow things out all the time. But especially as I'm talking about ancestors, of course. But hopefully that doesn't happen again while I'm commute, moving forward. But um, this connection to ancestors lately has been so significant and so symbolic for me and important for me at this moment in my life because I can't tell you how much work and effort and energy I'm putting into connecting with my ancestors, some specific and some that I've never even met. But their influence is so strong in my life and just trying to connect with them and develop a relationship with them and ask them for their advice and for their counsel and for their input and for their blessing in my life and their protection, all of these things. And that's again one of the reasons why I came down to New Orleans is to better understand my own personal history of, you know, within my family and then also what's in my blood more than just my family, but what connects me to other, you know, Africa and other African Americans and our history together as a family unit. So when I'm looking at this deck, I have been in such an emotional space lately because I've really been opening myself up and to be more vulnerable to connecting with my guides and connecting with my ancestors and that doesn't come without a weight to it it doesn't come without a burden and what really is important to me right now and is symbolic to me is pulling some of these cards and knowing from my own history 18 plus years 16 plus 20 years I don't know the math at this point but knowing the history of the Rider weight and knowing what that card traditionally represents and then seeing its appearance in this tarot deck and then the connection of the ancestor and the connection of the family member and the and how much they support you and how much they are there and how much we are not alone I believe we're not alone in our physical presence here in this moment so this deck I mean it comes with incredible timing even as I'm talking about it now I can't help myself but to get a little emotional because that's just who I am right now it's not that I'm going through something it's I'm going through everything meaning like my whole life is changing in a way that's good in a way that I set intention for I'm becoming more vulnerable I'm becoming more open I'm understanding the depths of myself and all of this is at one at one time in my life my life is so blessed right now but at the same time I'm really diving into my spiritual self and for me to do that there's a lot of things that are getting uprooted there's a lot of things that I'm understanding I cry out of gratitude I cry from abundance I cry from the blessing of just every moment I cry from the emotion in it how difficult life is even in its good aspects in you know fear or uncertainty or connection I cry for all of it because it's just emotional and that's where I've been at and why I'm saying this when it comes to this unboxing of this tarot deck it's because this reminder of our personal power this is the magician card and the symbolism behind that but also these little reminders of not only is it these birds in the horizon that bring messengers that or that bring messages because birds traditionally within the rider weight you'll see that when the birds show up or where there's movement happening it's because a message is coming in and that's the message and the symbolism of that card but more than that if you look at the tarot deck and within the african with that within the african-american tarot there is more than just the messengers of information coming in but it's the connection to our ancestors and also these memories these things that have happened to us now let me go ahead and 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 how that how the connection of that like this uh, for the seven of pentacles here 
Um, or I think it's seven of, what did they call it within this deck? Yeah, pentacles, okay. So cups is called chalices and then wands, so that pretty much stays the same, and swords, so chalice is the only thing that changes. But there was one card here that stood out to me, oh, and it's the Eight of Cups. Now this, traditionally within the Rider Waite, the Eight of Cups, you'll see this kind of cloaked person, this cloaked individual that's kind of mourning and there's eight cups that are stacked behind them and it's because that person has received from the universe all that it is that they're gonna receive from this one situation and as they receive they realize this is what it is that I'm gonna get this is what it is that this is it is what it is and something within that reminds them that this or tells them is clear to them that I am not satisfied within the situation I have to move forward that there, I, I understand that you have presented all that you can to me, but all that this is is not serving my purpose. And with sadness, I have to say goodbye and I have to move forward. I have to go out into the unknown. And there's all types of feelings that are connected to that. The feeling of leaving something that it is that you love or the fear of being forced to leave something that it is that you love, having to say goodbye to that. And also the feelings of the unknown. I don't know what's out there, but I have to go. Um, that person has, has their sh shoulders kind of slumped over within the Eight of Cups. And this is different within the African American Tarot deck. There's a reason why I'm saying this. But within the Eight of Cups, within the Rider weight, that person has their sh shoulders slumped over because they've really taken a hit, an emotional hit. They're drained. They're exhausted. They're emotional. They're sensitive. They're vulnerable. That's why they're wrapped in this cloak for protection and, to, and bereavement and, you know, hold me. When we wrap a blanket around us, it's because we're vulnerable, we need protection, we need warmth, because without it, we're open to the elements, we're open to exposure, whether it be physical, emotional, spiritual, mental, whatever. So that's the message within that card. But when you look at the Eight of Cups within the African American um, tarot, this is this person who is telling the story of the sacrifice to these other people and these cups that are surrounding them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These chalices that are surround them and they're filled. And again, something was lost here. And whenever you tell a story of history or when you tell a story of something that has happened that has been sacrificed. And if you look in the corner, this is, I believe it's either Malcolm X within that the, the, the artist explains within the book that he uh, provides either it's M Malcolm X or it's Martin Luther King. Let me see. Is that Lana Del Rey playing in the background? I am surprised. Be and I hope. Okay, it's Malcolm X. That is Lana Del Rey playing in the background. I hope Insta Instagram or YouTube doesn't hear that and flags my video for copyright uh, violations. But either way. Um, yeah, it's Malcolm, damn it, I just read it and then I just forgot it. Just like that. Okay, it's Malcolm X, yeah. And the symbolism that they say for this card is it's connected to maturity, correct assessment, concreteness, growth, renun renunciation, and sacrifice. And the reason, to me, when I saw that, I had to sit with it for a second because I'm like, yeah, something was sacrificed here. Like, where is the loss in this? But the way that the artist, Jamal, Jamal R. Thomas Davis, the way that he describes this card and the way that his interpretation was not to focus on the loss and the sacrifice and what is no longer here, which is what the Eight of Cups within the Rider weight is looking at. It's like, this is, you know, this is what has served us. This is what was given to us. And it's not that we're not satisfied, but we're moving on. And that's the symbolism of it because everybody's story is different. The Eight of Cups represents moving from one state in a, in emotionally. There's emotions that are connected to it. It may not be easy, but moving on to the future. And that's what he has captured within this card, within, within the African-American tarot deck, within the Eight of Cups, or the Eight of Chalices for him is the sacrifice that came from that loss and how it actually painted the future for us and created the future for us 
whether and again it comes from this loss and the emotion that's connected to it yes we're sad to say goodbye but we're focusing on the future and through telling that story and reliving that emotion helps to honor that story and to honor that aspect of the journey but also to remind us that life goes on this is transformation and we take the lessons of the past and we apply it to the future and it has it serves us in in the future it provides us freedom it provides us flexibility, abundance, maturity because of what it is that we had to say goodbye to. And the fact that he focused on that and is surrounding that message, I'm going to carry that as I look at the right or weight and as I work with the right or weight. Because again, we're not going to focus so much on the loss as much as let's focus on what can be gained from this. Yes, the emotions are connected to it, but without it, we would have never experienced, we would have never grown, we wouldn't have the future that we have if we didn't let go of the past and what the past served in that moment in that time. That being said, I think it's very important that we then look at the Empress and the Star card, which are beautiful. And as an African American woman, to see these women in position and the positions that they are in different ways that they are presented meaning like she has curly hair here and kinky tight curls here which i love and then in this one her hair is pressed it's more wavy because there's different varying types of us as african-american women and we don't have to and i speak for myself and i also speak for my african-american sisters like we don't have to choose one way to present ourselves and just as magnificent as the form is in her curlier state and her natural state here is the same that she is in this natural state here and there is one isn't better than the other they're both goddesses and i just love looking at how the women present themselves differently and the energy that they present themselves including the men i find that very symbolic so here with the empress i, I love the fact again how beautiful she is as she's like laying back i've really been connecting with the empress lately i've been pulling it a lot you've probably been seeing that on my instagram and the message of hope here um, with the star card and all the stars and you know looking up and the, the the clouds that are passing and she's looking at that and honoring that but also she's surrounded by inspiration and hope and healing and that's the message of the star card so there's that the seven of swords is another card that really stood out to me which is this baboon you know cut type creature who lifts his mask just for a moment to get a drink and doesn't realize that the lion who's majestic and honest and honorable and has integrity sees this baboon this joke and sees the truth of them in this moment when he lets his guard down and that's what the seven of swords kind of represents is this kind of sneaking character which shows again this artist connects more to the message which is even sneaky cheeky bastards like this baboon will eventually be revealed and then I'm wondering why the ancestors are here and what that represents in the moment when you're shuffling the cards and it presents itself to you. There's some other things that I wanted to really talk about with you guys, and it's the personality of the suits, or not the suits, but the personality of the court cards are really accurately portrayed within the African American tarot. And I want to pull out the King of Swords and how stern his face is and how powerful his face is. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry guys, I'm filming on my phone at this moment because as you know, I broke my camera, which I was normally filming with that, but during Mercury Retrograde, I was on a trip and then the water spilled on it. And then there, oh, the Queen of Cups and how jovial and how perfectly like captured her spirit, the essence of her spirit is and how you know, nurturing, like she's so approachable versus the King of Swords, you kind of be a little nervous to approach him and that's exactly, you know, that's it's accurate. You know, this is a very stern person and she's more opening and nurturing and just like, hello. The same with the King of Cups. And he's laughing too, he's got a smile on his face. He's got joy in his heart, he's got a drink in his hand. There's light, there's water. He, he just seems approachable, he seems fun. You know what I mean? There's a lot of action and activity going on around him. She's sitting by the water too. It shows abundance again and this relaxed energy, which is what both the King and the Queen of Cups brings is that relaxed vibration, that relaxed energy. And then I can't help but to notice the Queen of Wands and how intimidating she is, but also intriguing, which is again, this energy that the Queen of Wands brings within any, within any tarot card 
deck and her sense of independence, that cat is still there. You'll see that within the Rider Waite, the symbolism of the cat and the independence and the um, one minute she's open to you and you can go ahead and touch her and the next minute she can attack. And that's that, that snake here, that passion that's kind of coiled up and kind of expressing itself, which I find really interesting. These cards right here, the Nine of Pentacles, how independent and you know fulfilled she is within this card, I love. <clears throat> The devil card I really stood out to me and again it's an, an uh, I can never pronounce his name but a Nazi's web with a spider and the getting caught in that web and the symbolism that's connected to um, the devil in general which is you know what is the web that you're getting caught in is it something that benefits you is it something that holds you back um, the connection to pleasure is and that decision these two people are making a choice do I allow myself to get entangled in this is it something that is positive and constructive for me and for my life or is it something that is destructive and it's gonna hold me back am I gonna get entangled in this in a way that you know I might live to regret and that's ultimately the question of the devil card like what is it that is tempting you in your life is it something that is going to serve you that you should say yes to because of for the sake of pleasure and for the sake of freedom and to not have to put these restrictions and these holds on yourself to kind of break free from the norm and allow yourself to indulge? Or is this going to entangle you? Is it toxic? So those are the questions that you have to ask yourself with that web. What does that web look like? Then there's these cards that right now are really symbolic and meaningful for me personally. For, for example, the world card and the emperor card, that masculine energy. And as a feminine, as a woman, and working with so much time, working with goddess energy and healing goddess energy for me personally. And now, you know, at that moment in my life when I was in Philadelphia and exerting so much uh, masculine energy and asserting myself and dominating and learning how to be a leader for my business, for my brand, and for you guys and to create boundaries and to say no and to be assertive. Those are things that in the spiritual world, the spiritual community, we, you know, it, it's hard. Even with magic, we, we have conflicting feelings towards it. Is it wrong, you know, am I mean, am I rude if I say no? And we're learning, a lot of you guys are learning now that it's very important you know, the balance of these energies to be just as much as receiving as you are dominating, as much as you are asserting. And that is ultimately what magic is, is that balance, that alchemy between merging these different energies. So for me, seeing the emperor and seeing the world, you know, fall in the hands of this man and the snake and his power and his control is, a, you know, if I see this card for a moment in my, within my reading, which lately I've been, you know, getting, I've been pulling more, of the high priestess. I've been pulling more of the empress lately um, and a few other cards. But if I see these masculine energy cards show up within my reading for myself or for my clients, but I don't think I'm gonna do this, use these cards for my clients. This is probably gonna be something for me. Then the symbolism of what that means for me and what that triggers for me, say no more. Like I know what you're saying and I'm gonna channel the energy of these two. And just as a woman, you know, just gonna channel it and build it and bring it because that's what these cards represent. It's this completion and this control, this power that we have, our destiny. Um, yeah, so I mean, these are some of the, oh, some, some cards that really stood out to me, again, is I love the moon card with the hyena and things just kind of being like unknown, the unforeseen and things not being what it is that they see, just hearing the hyenas, they're so um, intimidating and scary to look at. They're so uncontrollable, they're so, I don't know just I don't I don't when I see the hyena I don't feel comfortable I don't feel safe and that's what you get with the moon card as much as I love the moon that's the essence of the moon cards energy in general it's intimidating it's scary this card too stood out to me the one of the uh, the ace of Pentacles and I just love this because this is about creation this is about what you create being more than it it's not about you it's about the generation it's about serving something creating something a foundation for not just you and for your future but for your children's future and right now I'm 31 at the time of me filming this video I've been thinking a lot about my future I've been thinking a lot about my family and my work and my purpose right me right now I'm realizing in everything it is more than just me it's it impacts my my offspring if you know if God blesses me with a child and in, in that family so I, I can relate to that I can resonate with that so strongly right now and how what I've created 
you know, it's more than just serving me. It's more than serving the world. It's going to help me to take care of my family and to provide for my family and the way that I want to be able to provide for my family and how I want to raise my children and what I want my family to look like and to be like. Whoops. And then with the Ace of Swords, hold on, let me pick this up. Um, with the Ace of Pentacles, I'm sorry, it's, it's again, it's that seed that's getting planted that serves not just you selfishly. Now, we're all at different points in our lives, and this is what this represents to me and how this makes me feel, but we're all at different points in our lives, and just the fact that he has planted the seed and um, is growing it, it's more, you have this child here that's waiting to be taken care of that's vulnerable, and you have this child here that's in his hands, and just like how important and impactful it is to create a foundation. And that's what the Pentacles does. It's the start of building that foundation. And the fact that Jamal Thomas Davis brought that into this card, I'm just like, go you, go you. There's some cards too here that um, I'm probably gonna like end this now or start to end this now. The Hierophant, going to guidance and seeking counsel and going to an elder, a wiser person. And I love that this is who that is, that it's masculine energy, that it's a male. I love that that's who that is. And that's my personal preference. Then we have the lover's card, the choice that is made. Men typically are drawn by lust or attraction. Women are the ones who tend to bring that attraction to the divine, to the gods, and tend to be more connected to this universal energy, to spirit. And that, that's okay. Everybody serves, we, we, we make, everybody serves their purpose. And then within the lover's card, it's making that choice that's divine, div, uh, divinely inspired by the spirits, um, the divine. And that's what we see here. This is not our ancestors. Maybe it is. But I see this as the divine energy inspiring the woman and pulling in the man and just everything kind of like, you know, hearing. You know, the, the lovers is connected to Gemini. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is the messenger. So when they come together, there, a choice is being made, a decision is being made, and that decision is not always easy, but they choose each other. And because they're making this commitment before God or before the divine or before each other or their family, they have to honor that, and that's what they've chosen to do, and it's not easy. The journey moving forward is not going to promise to be easy and effortless all the time. It's going to create, you're going to have to sacrifice, you're going to have to be devoted, you're going to have to be committed. Um, there's going to be times where your those commitments and that devotion is going to be um, challenged. But if you are, you know, disciplined, which is a huge word right now, if you're disciplined, then you will reap the reward of it. And it's more, again, it's more than just you. It's a commitment before God. It's a commitment that you've made, and you have to honor that. And I think that in our society right now, a lot of people are struggling with that. But that's why I literally set intention and I pray over my life and I pray for you guys too that you, you know, we were able to receive that and we're able to do that, to honor that through thick and thin. That's what marriage is. And by marriage, I don't mean, you know, romantic relationships, but marriage to your business. What are you devoted to? What are you committing yourself to? And that means writing it out through thick and thin, through the good times and the bad times. I've seen that with my business. I see that with my friendships. I've seen that with um, some romantic relationships within my life. So... And then the success that comes from that, which I love that too. Look at that celebration card right there. All right, you guys. Um, and just to end it on a light note, because I feel like we got a little heavy there. Um, I feel like so many of you guys are like, show us the high priestess. Who's the high priestess? This is the high priestess within the African-American tarot deck. And can we just honor her for a moment? Can we just avert our eyes and just honor her for a minute? Because I am really calling this into my life, just that that counsel, that elder spirit. I have so many women in my life that have, you know, approached me as the high priestess and have presented themselves as the high priestess. But now I'm in this different wave, this different step in my journey, and this is what I'm calling in. <laughs> that high priestess energy. So I love you guys so much. Again, um, I'm going to link down below the details of this deck if you want to go ahead and purchase it. If someone knows who Jamal Thomas Davis is, holler at them and let them know that I appreciate so much what they have done with this deck, with the artwork, with the creation of it, with the thought behind it. It is not only inspiring, but it is enlightening in a lot of ways and it has really already allowed me to connect even further with my spiritual practice. So thank you so much for the thought that you put into this and the creation of this tarot deck. And thank you for just putting yourself out there because it's not easy. 
And the other thing is that I will link this card deck down below for those of you guys who want to get your hands on it. And if you would like to see a video on breaking in your new tarot deck, whether it be this one that you decide to purchase or another tarot deck, no, I'm not in any way, shape, shape, form affiliated with this tarot deck or this person. I obviously don't know who they are, but I respect them. I just, you know, honor people who deserve to be recognized and this person in my opinion and this tarot deck needs to be recognized or else I wouldn't have put it on my YouTube channel I can be honest and tell you that but um, yeah if you want to see a video on how to break in your new tarot deck that is up for you on my YouTube channel maybe I'll link it down below and I will see you guys in my next video make sure that you're subscribed and you have those notifications on if you love this video thumbs up it or share it with your tribe or talk about it all right I love you bye